everybody, it's Tim. Welcome back. Um, another building video for today. Uh, as you remember, uh, last year I made a Mandalorian helmet for myself. Um, and I learned some things that I kind of wanted to try a little differently the second time around. So I'm currently making a Space Marine, uh, Ultramarines, as you can see from the emblem, uh, helmet for my son. And I wanted to try kind of two different ways. So uh, for the majority of the helmet, I did a good smear of Bondo. Um, this is what I've used in the past for a lot of 3D printing projects where I'm trying to fill in gaps, cracks, um, you know, joints that didn't come together quite as easily as I wanted them to. And I mean, it's okay. It does the job. You know, you squeeze out a little bit of it, like a piece of cardboard, you use a, you know, a little putty knife to kind of smear it around, let it dry nice and hard, and then sand it. And I mean, it does a good job. It makes it nice and smooth. It does a decent job of building up a thick layer. Um, but I was reading the other day online about people who were recommending using just wood filler. And I had never done it before. Um, ironically, I grew up, uh, my dad's a carpenter, and I grew up using wood filler all the time um, for finished work, but never thought to use it for 3D printing. So the other night, um, I started doing some little test applications here and there uh, just to try to smooth it out. You know, it's not too bad. I mean, obviously the lines are present, um, but, you know, my son is most likely going to end up breaking this. So uh, I don't really want to, like, kill myself trying to get this perfect because I kind of know the fate of how this helmet's going to be. Um, but I still want to do a good job at it, you know? So um, I started doing uh, some filling in on here. As you notice, I had a print in a lot of small areas. I don't have a large volume 3D printer. I have a small, um, the one I'm using right now is my Prusa Mini, which is great. But if you wanna do something huge like this, um, the word mini in the name um, is not, you know, just a clever title. Um, it's a small printer and this is a big helmet. So, you know, you can see I tried my best to glue the different sections together, but obviously get everything to line up nice and then stay where you want it. Um, it's not perfect. So let's dive in. I'm gonna show you how this sands up. Uh, we can apply some more and then I'll kind of give you my thoughts at the end. Now, unlike the Bondo where you need to kind of smear it onto a, you know, some sort of pallet, I usually use a piece of cardboard and then use the putty knife. You can literally just squeeze this stuff right onto your hand and then just start working it in. And you know, you can kind of smear it around, pick some different surfaces, really sort of just start to fill it in as you see fit. Um, and what I don't like about the Bondo is it dries so fast, which is like a good and a bad. If you're trying to work with something and then you want to sand and do a coat, you know, you could do multiple coats you know, really quickly, you know, it's nice if you're working on your car or something and you're trying to beat a rainstorm, you know, maybe what the Bondo is actually designed for. But, you know, when I'm doing something like this, I'd rather have a little more time to work with it, not have it dry up real fast and be a waste. Give me some time to actually work it into the little, uh, you know, the troughs in between each layer of the 3D printed, uh, you know, filament here for all the different lines, the detail. And I really just want to kind of clog up all those cracks and try to get the surface to be as smooth as uniform as I can. And the nice thing is that I don't have to be super clean about this because I'm just going to sand it down. So I don't really care how it looks right now at this step. I'm just trying to get coverage. Um, the only thing I really care about is putting too little onto a surface because then I can come back and I can just sand it down to the level that I want. And I mean, feel free to go ahead and, you know, wear rubber gloves or something if you want. But I mean, for what it is, I don't care. I just put it on my finger and I just smear it right in there and it washes off like a breeze. Just go over to your sink and wash off some water. You probably even just use a damp rag or something if you have it. And you notice if you wipe along the line of the filament, you're probably going to drag it out. But if you drag it across and go orthogonally to the line of the print, you can kind of fill those in a little bit better. And as you can see here, there's still some cracks. So I can either try to gunk it up more now, or I could always just let that dry, sand it, and then do a second coat later. 
Um, you know, obviously your results are going to vary based on what printer settings you're using, the different filament type, and the geometry of your print. So kind of experiment and use it on a case-by-case -case basis and then see how it comes out. So as you can see, uh, the application process for the wood filler is super simple. Um, you know, you literally just smear that on your finger. You know, I was able to clean it up with some water in like all five seconds. Um, you don't even really need soap to get it off. Uh, whereas the Bondo, that stuff's pretty tough and you got to use like mineral spirits to really get it off. Um, sanding, as you saw, um, is kind of a breeze with this. It doesn't make as much dust, in my opinion, as maybe the Bondo does. Um, so it was easier to clean up uh, my workspace. And um, one thing I've really got to point out is, and this should be you know, pretty easy to explain. This is uh, you know, the winter of 2022, and we've all been wearing different masks for quite a while now. But um, if you don't have proper ventilation, uh, make sure you definitely wear some kind of mask while you're doing this. Because this stuff contains uh, things that basically you know, could potentially cause cancer, um, and this contains silica. So there's all sorts of stuff in here that you really don't want to be breathing in and have get stuck in your lungs. So if you don't have, you know, an exhaust hood, uh, good ventilation where you're working, um, definitely wear one of these and kind of just give everything a wipe down when you're done. Um, but yeah, so I have to say, like, based on what I've seen here today, the wood filler might be my new go-to. Um, it's easier to apply, it's easier to clean up. I think it's easier to clean up your workspace and your tools when you're done. You don't need a putty knife. Um, and I just think all around it's kind of a cooler thing to work with. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not getting rid of the Bondo. I think the Bondo is better for filling up large volumes at the, you know, when you're trying to really get it done. Um, like up here, you can see I use Bondo to fill in basically this little like trough here uh, where the two pieces wanted to be further apart. And even then, it still shrunk and cracked as it dried up. I don't think the wood filler could really fill in that big of a bond, um, a void, I mean, without uh, drying up too much and then splitting apart, but we'll find out. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use uh, the wood filler on the rest of this, get a nice sand, and then uh, start priming and getting it painted up. Uh, my son's already got it picked out, he wants to do it white, so we're just gonna use some nice uh, matte white primer uh, painter to get it started, and then uh, we'll go from there. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. You'll probably see more of this in future videos. And uh, thanks again for checking in. Have a good day. Bye.